Welcome or welcome back to The Soul Tapes. The Soul Tapes is my way of tracking myself as an artist over time and tracking myself as a person over time. I feel like I put a lot of myself and a lot of my soul into my art um, and I feel like I'm a very authentic and genuine person and I try my best to show that in the way that I speak. So I feel like making the soul tapes and visually tracking my progress as an artist and as a person is a way for me to also track the ebbs and flow of my own soul. Um, and I hope to share that with you. I hope that you enjoy watching me grow as a person and as an artist through time. It's only my second video, so if you watched the first one, thank you so much and welcome back. If this is your first time seeing my face, welcome! My name is Shiva. I am a self-taught artist um, and also kind of a podcaster. I feel like this is a little bit more similar to like a visual diary. Um, and if you are not watching on YouTube and you're listening on some type of podcasting platform, hey to you too, friend. Thank you for listening. Um, without further ado, we're going to get into today's topic. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. So today's topic is discipline. Um, and I feel like a lot of people hear the word discipline and be like, mm, that's not a big word for Elmo. Um, and it might be, but I don't think it has to be. Um, I think that discipline is really just the act of showing up for yourself. When I hear disciplined a lot of times in context, I hear people say like, oh, they're a really disciplined artist or they're a disciplined scientist or <laughs> something like that. You know, there's an air of respect for people who are very disciplined in something. A lot of times we even hear the term disciplined in the, like, the area of fitness. Um, you have to be disciplined. You have to show up every day. And I think that we see discipline as this like really hard concept. Like if I had to imagine discipline as a shape, I would imagine discipline as like a square, you know, it has these hard corners and, and you can't break it. But I feel like discipline is genuinely softer um, when you do it the right way. I feel like discipline should have some flexibility. Discipline should have the flexibility to allow you to be disciplined and however you can show up at that moment. So I feel like discipline is really more like a square or not a square, more like a circle. Um, it's soft around the edges if you let it be. And what I mean by discipline is meant to be flexible is that there needs to be some type of acceptance for when you aren't disciplined. You know, sometimes we don't show up. Sometimes we don't go to the gym five days a week like we said we would. You know and having acceptance for that because next week is a new week it's okay you know nobody's gonna hurt you <laughs> nothing's gonna happen if you didn't go to the gym five days a week and i know sometimes we can become disappointed in ourselves for not being as disciplined as we want but it's not the end of the world you know as fast as these days is flying by next week we'll be here tomorrow okay so if you didn't do that good this week start again next week baby it's okay tomorrow's a new day even um so when i think of discipline for me and how the in the ways i want to be disciplined i think about specifically fitness and i think about um my art so as far as fitness is concerned i personally want to incorporate movement into my life daily um ideally i'd like to go to the gym at least three days a week but i'm giving myself that flexibility so on Mondays, I go into the office for work and I work from home other days. On Mondays, I don't have as much flexibility in my schedule to go to the gym, but my goal is to go before I go to work. That means I'm waking up at around 5 a.m. to go to the gym. And sometimes if I'm being realistic, I might not have gotten enough sleep the night before to do that. And so giving myself the flexibility to say, hey, just daily movement. That might mean after I get off work, since I wasn't able to go to the gym in the morning, do some yoga instead. You know, giving yourself flexibility to be disciplined because when it's too hard, it's too, it's not realistic. You know, we're, we're human beings, you know, and life does happen and you have to have grace with yourself in those moments. So with my art, being disciplined looks like doing this. 
I'm supposed to record two videos a month. Now you're seeing this in February. And if you're looking at my channel, you're like, mm. <laughs> January only had one video. Now listen, players mess up. And if you in my business, don't do that. But thank you for keeping me accountable. Now, that's what I mean. Having flexibility with my discipline. I'm, I didn't, you know, players mess up. I didn't show up for myself as much as I should have last month. But this month is a new month. And so this month I'm going to try my best to be disciplined. Um, and that means trying again and again and again. Even if that means I fell off the horse a few times, it's okay. It happens, you know. Um, and so that's partially why, not partially why, that's exactly why I started this channel. I want to see how my discipline ebbs and flows with who I am as an artist and as a person you know I want to record that process I want to be able to look back and see who I've become oh in, in January I wasn't that disciplined I didn't make two videos I was going through this that or the third um but in February I made four videos I was really really serious in February you know I was feeling real good about myself in February so I think it's good to for me to record these videos and to track this like this process and this progress for myself um, so that I can keep myself accountable but also hopefully as this community grows as this channel grows into whatever it grows into you know I'll have my own little community of people of other creatives of subscribers of whoever that's interested in watching my content um, that can keep me accountable Somebody who can DM me and be like, hey, sis, it's been a few months, I ain't seen no video, where you at, you know? And I could be like, you know what, girl, you right, let me get back on my Zoom. You right, you right, you know? And so I think that <laughs> this is a really big, this, you're, you guys are seeing, you know, the, the start of my discipline. I'm not disciplined yet, but I'm trying. Um, and I'm not afraid to be seen trying to be disciplined. And so... Right now, my discipline process for both fitness and art look a little different. So for fitness, um, I like I said, I try to go to the gym three days a week, but here's my split. So Monday is supposed to be push, so that's chest, triceps, and shoulders. Um, and then Tuesday is supposed to be quads and glutes. Wednesday is an at-home workout, whether that be um, yoga, Pilates, stretching, dancing, whatever it is, usually like some type of YouTube video. Um, Thursday is pull, so that's back and biceps. And then Friday is hamstrings and glutes. And then on the weekends, my boyfriend and I tend to go to the park, go to picnics, go on walks and stuff. So that's kind of like my, my daily movement. It's less focused on like an actual workout and more on just moving my body in some way, shape or form. So that's, that's really my goal with the, with fitness, you know, and with art, like I said, it's posting at least two videos a month. Um, but really genuinely, it's just drawing a few times a week, trying my best to just keep my, my creative juices flowing, you know? Um, because I had a really, really bad artist block for some years, if I'm being honest with y'all. Um, and so I'm trying to get back into the swing of things because I think that you can become good at anything if you keep on trying. I think they said something about like 10,000 hours and you'll be like an expert at something or something like that. I'm butchering it, but something like that, you know, the more disciplined you are at showing up for something, the better you'll get at it. And I think I'm, an, I'm naturally talented as an artist. I think I can draw, I think I can paint really well, but I can't help but feeling like I could be so much more talented or so much farther if I had been disciplined back then. And for so long that was holding me back. Like, ah, oh, I'm not as good of an artist as this person or that person, da, 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 da. Why not? The call is coming from inside the house, thinky. You know, because you're not disciplined, because you're not still doing it, you're not showing up. Even if like part of making art is understanding that sometimes you will make bad art and showing up the next day anyway so that is what I'm trying to do make the art show up put the pencil on a paper it don't matter <laughs> what is it what the end result is just put the pencil on a paper um, get on your zoom you know to you know to put it other ways just that's my goal is to just make sure that I'm showing up for myself 
because that's important. Like I need to show up for myself no matter what. So I think a really big part of discipline too is like the accountability aspect of it. And that's an area um, that I think a lot of us could put a little more emphasis on. So for me, accountability right now, as far as fitness goes, looks like posting, posting my, my fitness goals, whether that be, I use the rise app to post, post my workouts and it's kind of like social media too, but also like I'm in fitness group chats, like my line sisters, we call it the fitness raids, like showing up and making sure that there are other people who are laying eyes on the work that I'm doing, posting it on my Instagram story and on my Finsta, because if I don't go to the gym, please believe somebody is going to be like, Shiva, miss me. Um, I haven't seen you post about the gym in a little bit, where you at, what you're doing, you know, and even seeing like following other people who post fitness content or even just like, not even like fitness content, but like my friends who go to the gym, seeing their stuff. If I ain't been in the gym in two weeks and I keep seeing you've been to the gym every day for the last month, do you think I'm going to keep watching that story and not hop in that car and get in that gym? No. Accountability is really, really important. Um, I also think that accountability can be done in a lot of different ways. Um, like I said, like group chats are a really great thing. If you're not into like fitness or you're not necessarily a creative person um, in like an artistic way, something I've also done in the last few months is start a cooking club. So I had seen a TikTok It was like a bunch of black women and they were cooking and drinking wine together. And the like caption was like POV, you and your friends start a cooking club. And I thought that was so stinking cute. But my friends live all types of different places. Like, you know, I went to college in one place. And a lot of times when you go to college in one place, people are from everywhere. Um, And that happens to be the case. So I posted on my story. I was like, who wants to be in a cooking club? And I actually had 13 other women say they wanted to join. And for the last like two months or so, we have been meeting up every week and cooking something different. And it's been pushing my boundaries and allowing me to come a little more disciplined even in like cooking regular meals, you know. I get I gain inspiration and I gain accountability from the cooking club because there are people who are posting new recipes, who are expanding my mind um, and making sure that I am showing up and cooking something. It's a lot harder for me to go out to eat and eat fast food now even because I can't help but to think about the banging shrimp and grits we made the other week or the salmon we made the other week, you know? So it helps me to just be more disciplined even in my eating and eating healthy. Um, So if there's something you're interested in, if it's like crocheting or rock climbing or whatever it is you're interested in and you feel like there's no community around it, build it, baby. Build it. What's stopping you? Who's stopping you? Put out, put out a little PSA, put out a little public service announcement. Does anybody want to be my accountability partner for this? Or does anybody want to start a club for this with me? You know, and I bet you somebody will, because the way social media works, you can post it on TikTok, you post it anywhere, and you're going to find people from all over the world who have similar interests in you. And you might even want to look and see if anybody has already put that PSA out, join their club, join the thing they're interested in. Find your niche, you know, find your community in that niche. I think a lot of times we're trying to fit ourselves ourselves into boxes we simply don't fit in, you know, and I think that we see discipline as this like box, you know, we see it like, excuse me, go to the gym, you know, five days a week. I have to look like this and I have to do this. And that's not really what it looks like. I feel like discipline is a little more flexible. Um, And that means giving yourself that, that acceptance, that flexibility to make it look like whatever it needs to look like for you. So for example, with my fitness journey, I fully understand that like, Hey, five days a week going to the gym is just not realistic. Stuff happens. I have to go into the office. My work schedule may change. So I just make the goal to be daily movement, whatever that may look like. Um, and I allow myself to have accountability partners. And I think that's, the easiest way to stay disciplined. Um, And I think that when you show up for yourself and you're disciplined enough to show up for yourself, you're, you're showing yourself how much you really love yourself. I have said time and time again that I think discipline is the most undefeated form of self-love. 
Because when you show up for yourself time and time again, can't nobody come in your life and just be doing anything, you know? You show up for yourself every week. You don't break any promises to yourself. So why would you let them come in your life and break promises to you? Mm -mm. No. So I think that being disciplined is really good. I think maybe um, one practice for helping yourself to stay disciplined and motivating yourself to stay disciplined is thinking about your future self. There is a future version of myself. There is a future Shiva who is going to have my dream body. I just, I see her right now. She's real slim, thick, real cute, waist, you know, booty. But I can't be her unless I'm the her today that's doing the work, you know? And so that's how I show myself I love myself by doing exactly what I said I was going to do, keeping my promises, you know, to myself um, and being disciplined in that daily movement. It doesn't have to be crazy, you know, and I'm also not putting pressure on myself. I don't have to be that version of myself next month. You know, there is a version of myself at some time and form and I'm willing to accept myself for who I am now, who I will be next month and next month and next month until I am that version of myself. Because that is love. That is self-love. Um, and I think that showing up for yourself and thinking of yourself like, oh, there's this future version of me, this higher version of me, also keeps the goal in mind. Like, there is a goal here. There is a version of myself I want to be. I want to be an artist who's disciplined. I want to be an artist who, who's confident enough to go to, you know, um, uh, what are they called like swap meets and farmers markets and stuff like that and, and to show share my art publicly but I want to be disciplined in it first I want to show up for myself first I want to have a body of work to even be able to show off and so that future version of myself that's going home with hundreds of dollars from the market from showing my work to people she's gonna be so happy that I did this that I showed up like this that I promoted myself like this that I gave myself confidence like this you know so start thinking about who you want your future self to be maybe even journal about it i'm a big journaler you know don't sue me i am i am a therapist in training we love a little journal <laughs> but journal it out you know what do you want your future self to to feel like to look like to to sound like to to talk like what all of those things take go ahead and, and really think about that and then even um i was going to mention later but i guess i'll go now a practice I also think is really great is scripting. Scripting what you want your life to look like. So what do you want it to look like when you first wake up? What do you want your home to look like? What do you want your family to look like? What do you want your day to look like? Do you want to go to work here? Go to gym here? Do this, that, and the third. Figure that out from, from top to bottom and, and include your senses. Sound, taste, smell. What does your day look like? And then reverse engineer that, break it down. What would you have to be doing right now for the next however much time to get there? And be realistic, be for real with yourself now. What does that take? I can't say I want a 42 uh, hip, a 10 waist, you know, that's unrealistic, but a 25 waist, a 42 hip, and you know, I'm not in the gym getting on my Zoom. That's not realistic, girl. I have to reverse engineer. Okay, I want my body to look like this. What do I have to do to get there? You know, okay, I want my life to look like this. What do I have to do to get there? You know, and then how can I be disciplined in that? Break it all the way down. And I'm gonna give you an example. All right, so an example of figuring out what your goal is, like what your end goal is after you've done your scripting and you've journaled out and figured out who it is you wanna be or what it is you wanna accomplish. <clears throat> an example of breaking that down and figuring out how disciplined you'd have to be to get there would be building a house. I feel like it's an easy, simple example that we can all understand, right? Your end goal is, is to build a house. No matter what that house looks like, we all know kind of what goes into a house, right? You need a foundation, um, you need walls, you need a roof, you're going to need some paint, you're going to need blah, 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 right? So if your goal is to have this dream house made of brick, you know that you're going to have to start from jump. You're first going to have to get the bricks. You're going to have to lay the foundation. You're going to have to lay the bricks. 
you're going to have to put up the door, you're going to have to put up the roof, and then you will have a house. You don't want a house, want to build a house, and then you just have a house. You don't want to build your dream body and then you just have it. You know, there's a certain level of discipline that's going to have to go into it. If you're trying to build your dream house, how often are you going to have to show up and build a house? Is it an everyday project? Realistically for you, is it an every other day project? How much is it going to cost? Um, how many people are you going to need to hope hold you accountable and help you build that house? What are the necessary steps? And how often do you have to show up to do those steps? So when you do your scripting and you go ahead and you try to break down what your goals are, I want you to keep that in mind and be realistic, please. You know, I think that there are, there is this big concept that we want something and we go get it and and it's just that easy. It's a point A to point B. A lot of times that process of of becoming who you want to be or getting what it is that you desire is not a linear process you know for me in my fitness journey you know i used to think that the scale was the be all end all um determination whether or not i'm making progress and now i'm realizing like my weight can go up two pounds down five pounds back up two pounds back down 10 pounds like it fluctuates you know It's not a linear process. Nothing in life, I feel like, is genuinely a linear process. Even if you were using the build a house example, right? You might try to build a house and you think, oh, I just need bricks and I just need that and I need that. You forgot you actually needed 10 more bricks. And now that has put your your process on hold for a day. You thought you were going to get done, get it done by this date. And now you have to push that out. That's just life, you know? And so when you're building up what you want your goals to be, be realistic with yourself. Please factor in that you are a person and that you deserve to enjoy this process. This is not meant to be a punishment. Discipline is not punishment, it is love, okay? So when you're figuring it out and trying to decide what you want this process to look like, keep that in mind, boo. Don't do not do too much, don't stress yourself out. You know, take your time. Okay. And it'll be okay. (laughs) I promise. I promise it'll be okay if you have to take your time. You know, this time around with my fitness journey and with being disciplined in it, like I said, I've set the goal for daily movement, not I have to, I have to run, you know, for an hour every day because that's not enjoyable if I'm being realistic. And if I don't make it enjoyable for myself, I'm not going to stick to it. Why would I set myself up for failure when it comes to my discipline instead of setting myself up for success? When it comes to my discipline, I will be a lot more successful in being disciplined and I will be a lot more likely to actually show up and work out and move every day if I'm doing it in a way that I enjoy versus doing something I don't enjoy, you know, and there's what they be saying, like there's plenty of ways to skin a cat or whatever, you know, you don't have to just do it this way, you know, and it might take you longer if you take it slower and that's okay. You're not going nowhere. You know, this, you got (laughs) years to live, boo. It's not, nothing needs to be done by tomorrow, you know? Um, And I've been trying to get out of the habit of being like, oh, I need to lose this many pounds for my vacation because how is that going to impact my vacation? It doesn't impact, you know, if I lose 10 pounds, it don't change the destination. If I lose 10 pounds, it don't change the outfits I got planned. If I lose 10 pounds, it don't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't change what I got going on. So instead, I want to stop making my goals to be necessarily as time-based and more lifestyle-based. And that's just me, you know, and there's nothing wrong with time-based goals if that's what you want, you know. But for me, that's just not realistic. You know, I've done a lot of like, oh, I need to be skinny by this vacation. I need to be skinny by the time I do this. And that kind of sets me up for failure because the second I, I get to that time point, I let all that, all that go. I'm no longer working out consistently. I'm no longer eating right because I said this was a a time-based goal, you know, versus a lifestyle-based goal. So now I'm at the point where I want my goals to be lifestyle-based. I want to incorporate daily movements. So when I am 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years old, these are already parts of my, my day, you know, and I will be able to accept that no matter what my fitness level is at that age, I still want to incorporate daily movement 
even if that just means taking a few laps up and down the stairs when I'm 80. You know, I want to be able to do that, you know, because that's just what I've been doing since I was 25. So the same thing with my eating, you know, I want to become disciplined and eating healthier, but eating healthy doesn't look like never eating out or never eating junk food or never eating fast food. That looks like trying my best to eat at home when I can and going out when I can't, <laughs> you know, it's, it's that simple, you know, and when I do go out, trying my best to pick healthier options, you know, um, so don't overcomplicate having discipline and don't <clears throat> structure in a way, excuse me, structure it in a way that's not realistic to you, you know, because you deserve grace too. If you had a friend and your friend was like, girl, I'm trying to lose 10 pounds and da 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 within the next two months right that's realistic 10 pounds in two months is not a bad goal um and she says her goal is to work out seven days a week if she comes to you and she's like friend I only worked out three days last week you're not gonna look at her and be like you nasty bad body bleep 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 no (laughs) you're gonna look at her and be like okay girl do better next week Or I think it's really good that you worked out three days at all. You know, treat yourself like a friend when you're when you're learning to be disciplined. At least that's what I'm trying to do. You know, I'm trying not to be so hard on myself because at the end of the day, I want these these habits, like I said, to be lifestyle habits. Um, But I also want it to reflect self-love. I want to show love to myself as I'm going through this journey, as I'm going through this process of becoming the next version of myself because that's what I'm trying to do right I'm trying to get to this higher version this future version of myself and I need to give myself grace when I get as I get there you know I already know it's not an overnight process so why would I punish myself or why would I talk down on myself for not being perfect hello the only person that's perfect is supposed to be God that ain't me you know so I'm gonna try my best do what I can and give myself grace where I need to, you know, treat myself like I would my friends. Um, and so I hope that you can take that and you can internalize that because I think that's like one of the biggest parts of it. Like you're doing this for self-love and treat yourself better. So do that, you know, show up with love, with grace, give yourself love, give yourself grace. You know, this is not a, be all end all type of situation if you mess up one time um so yeah I'm trying to think what else I want to say about discipline because I feel like it's a broad topic um excuse me but it's not a super complicated one if that makes sense another thing I will say is that there are a lot of really good self-help books out there if you just want to build better habits but you're not really sure where to go People talk about this book a lot, um, but I genuinely think it is a great book. Okay, boom, I'm back. I went to go grab it. Um, The book I'm talking about is Atomic Habits. Um, It is by James Clear. And honestly, shout out to my my friend Xavier. He had bought me this book, I was thinking, I think as either as a birthday gift or as a Christmas gift or something like that. Um, because I said I wanted to be more disciplined in the gym and he bought me this book. Now it took me like (laughs) six months to read just because I haven't gotten consistent back with reading and that's something else I want to get more disciplined in. Um, but it is a great book for understanding how to build good habits. After I read the first like two chapters of this book, I was consistent in the gym for a whole year, like just off the strength of those first two chapters. Um, excuse me I think that James Clear breaks down like habit formation really well in this book not only habit formation but how to break bad habits he breaks down the best way to stack habits and to become disciplined in having habits like to make those consistent good habits Um, and he explains how you built up some of the bad habits you may have already and I feel like this book is a really 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 good introduction into becoming disciplined in whatever it is that you want to become disciplined in i genuinely (laughs) feel like 
note not to be dramatic but I genuinely feel like this book changed my life um and so if you're not somebody who likes to read a physical copy please get the audiobook because I feel like this would be great and maybe even better as an audiobook so that you can take the time and listen to somebody say these things and like process it in real time but I will hold this up one more time now for those who are watching with a time lapse um I'm not sure where I'm at at this point of the time lapse process. Um, I'm hoping I'm nearing the end, but I do wanna thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to watch this channel and support it. You know, you are literally helping me start the building blocks of this channel. You are seeing the, the baby videos of this channel. And it's so crazy because I know a year from now years from now i'll look back <laughs> on these videos and i'll be like wow you know i looked so young or i looked so this or i was this 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 and this um and so i'm already excited for that part of the journey um and i hope you enjoyed the art itself it was inspired by of course solange's song don't touch my hair um and it was also kind of inspired by like, like this medusa like concept i feel like a lot of people just be touching my hair you know of all races but especially one specific one you know and sometimes i don't be wanting it to be touched you know i feel like my hair is kind of sacred um i really put a lot of time and effort into my hair and i just don't like to be touched <laughs> by strangers so that's kind of what inspired this piece it's also about to be Black History Month. Um, most of my art, all of my art is black, um, but I feel like this is a very pro-black piece of art that I made and I'm really, really proud of it. I'm looking up because it's on my wall now, um, <clears throat> but I'm gonna take a little pose with it right quick for the thumbnail. So, and I'll probably have to take a picture picture but oops, this is my piece don't touch my hair hopefully you can see it with all the flash and everything going on um but I'm just super proud of it like look look at her she's so stinking cute um <laughs> but yeah I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are I hope that you treat yourself with love and kindness. I hope that you're gentle to yourself no matter where you're at in your journey. I love you very much. Thank you for watching. I hope you come back. Um, yeah, thank you. Bye friends.